All right, so let's talk about the new Logitech and Shroud G303 because this is such a polarizing mouse. Some people hate it, some people love it. And today I want to explain exactly who this is for so that you don't end up buying the wrong mouse because hey, just because it has Shroud's name on it doesn't mean that everyone is going to become a sudden aimbot with this thing. Again, this is a very polarizing shape. Having said that, in the right hands with the right grip style, this is like the dream mouse. And many of you know what this is. It's the G Pro X Superlite. It's Logitech Tech's current flagship gaming mouse and it's what I've been using ever since it launched around at this time last year. This is the mouse that I want to compare most to the G303 Shroud because I think for a lot of people looking for an upgrade these two are probably towards the top of the list. So let's get the input lag stuff out of the way first because as far as my testing shows both the Superlight and the G303 Shroud are among the most competitive when it comes to click latency. Both gaming mice run at a thousand hertz polling rate, both have Omron 20M mechanical switches and the firmware is likely in incredibly similar between the two. This also means that the new G303 Shroud is among the fastest actuating gaming mice with mechanical switches. Now I haven't gotten around to testing the sensor latency on the new G303 because I am currently updating my tool to become a little bit more accurate and easier to use, but I would happily bet that the results would be very close here to the super light. Now despite both mice having the same switches, the overall feel and tensioning is just so much better on the new G303. In fact, I'd say the main mouse buttons are some of the lightest, crispiest feeling clicks that I've ever seen on any gaming mouse. They actuate very easily and I'm personally a big fan. I've actually upgraded the Omron 20Ms to the KLGM2 switches in the Superlight and they feel way way better but I honestly am just going to leave the switches in the G303 because the 20Ms here actually feel really nice. Then when it comes to the scroll wheel it is slightly heavier than the Superlight but still overall pretty comfortable. As for the side buttons, these feel pretty good, much less pre-travel than on the Superlight, which can feel a little bit spongy. I use the rear side button in game for healing and abilities, and I had no problem with that at all. The front one, on the other hand, I found a lot harder to reach. So just keep that in mind if you use both of these side buttons quite frequently. The DPI button on top is quite small and easy to miss, which is probably a good thing so that you don't accidentally hit it. And this is one main difference between the new G303 and the Superlight. The Superlight does not have a DPI cycle button, that's only doable through the software. There is also an incredibly overkill slide out draw to hold the receiver on the new G303, which yeah, it is pretty overkill, probably not needed, but it does leave a lot more room underneath for those massive glides. And this brings us to some more similarities between these two mice. Both have the same PTFE material for the glides, which is not bad, but could always use a third party upgrade. And the coating on the shell feels identical too, which I've never had a problem with. The new G303 shroud has a semi-transparent finish on the sides, which looks kind of cool. The coating here does feel slightly different than on top, but overall still fine. When it comes to battery life, it's pretty mental on both of them. 70 hours of continuous use for the Superlight, with the G303 Shroud claiming over double that at 145 hours. That's the difference between plugging your mouse in for a quick charge once a month versus twice a month. Not really a big deal. I do need to stress actually how good the battery life on these mice are though. Even the Superlight honestly feels like it lasts forever. You can get away with with charging it while you're eating dinner and I feel like it's good for a month after that. So lots and lots of stuff are the same here, but of course, completely different mice. While the G Pro Superlight is aimed at catering to as many people as possible, the new G303 is more of a specialized type of weapon. In fact, the Superlight is fine for most hand sizes, most grip styles. Basically, if you give the mouse enough time and effort, you'll become comfortable enough with it. Comfortable is probably an understatement as it's currently the most used mouse among pro gamers. At the same time, the safe shape of the Logitech G Pro Superlight also means that it's not really optimized for a certain grip style. More specific or aggressive grip styles might prefer a more matching shape, so that's where the new G303 comes in. And I want to mention sensor placement real quick because that's another big difference between these two mice. The G Pro Superlight has it pretty much at dead center, whereas the G303 Shroud Edition has the sensor sitting a bit towards the rear, which is actually pretty rare to see. If anything, you'd typically see the sensor placed in the middle or towards the front a bit more like the Orochi V2, but having it towards the rear creates a really unique feeling. It honestly gives you this sensation that you're aiming with the base of your palm, which does take a bit of time to get used to. Having the sensor further back also means that with your typical wrist movements that you're used to, you'll probably find that your sensitivity feels 
lower than usual, and that's because the sensor will be traveling a smaller distance for the same amount of wrist movement. So if you are planning on going with the new G303 and you are predominantly a wrist aimer, I would consider bumping up your sensitivity just a little bit to account for that sensor placement. Now in terms of the weight differences, uh, 60 grams on the Superlight versus about 75 grams on the new G303, uh, in my opinion there are way more important factors at play here like the completely different shape, but I would be lying if I said that I didn't prefer the lighter feel of the Superlight. And just coming back to the shape of the new G303 though, because this is really where you need to consider if this is going to be a good fit for you. This is specifically a mouse designed for those with medium to large hands and for those that pretty much use a textbook claw grip. Fingertip is also possible here. I think you can definitely take advantage of the shorter overall length, but claw grip is really what this mouse is designed for. So this is how I grip the mouse. Overall, I do find that I get a more locked in grip compared to the Superlight, but for me, I am still adjusting to it and finding my way around this completely unique shaped mouse. My grip is not what I'd call ideal. Uh, I could probably curl my ring finger and pinky finger a little bit more, but even with this, it does feel a bit more comfortable than the G Pro Superlight. And after spending a few days with it, I did manage to break a few high scores in my more frequent Kovacs routines. I posted a top 1% score in Tile Frenzy, which might not sound crazy, but hey, that's pretty good for me. And tracking scenario scores were pretty close to personal bests. In game though, I'm yet to feel that 100% confident feeling with the new G303 like I eventually had with the G Pro Superlight. Again, I am still just adjusting to this completely new shape. So this is definitely not a mouse for me that I tried and instantly saw an improvement in my aim. I still have those moments of real inconsistencies where I just miss easy shots, but hopefully that sort of stuff will be ironed out with a bit more game time and experience. I will say though that my grip feels pretty locked in and solid on the new G303, and I think if I stick with it, I can probably develop a bit more consistency and probably better aim than what I had with the Superlight. At the same time, this is a mouse that some people will try and just absolutely hate. If you have small hands, use a palm grip, or prefer ergonomic mice, this mouse is almost definitely not for you. Now, I'm not someone who switches gaming mice a whole lot. I actually think that's kind of bad for your aim and consistency if you just keep switching back and forth. Uh, like I said, I've been using the Superlight pretty much every day for about a year now, but I will say the new G303 Shroud Edition is probably going to be my new main for the next year. I still have to try the new Final Mouse Starlight 12 Phantom when that arrives, but so far I am really liking the new G303. If however you don't fit into that group of users who have medium to large hands and use a claw grip, the Superlight would be a pretty top consideration. Of course there are a ton of other gaming mice out there to consider, but for a lot of people this is probably it. Now I will eventually be doing a video of the top gaming mice of 2021, so do stay tuned for that, but spoiler alert, the G Pro Superlight and Shroud G303, they are ranked right up there at the top. And I do understand that both of them are premium priced gaming mice, uh, 150 for the Superlight and about 130 for the new G303, but I really believe for the amount of performance that you're getting and the amount of time that you spend using them, that price can be justified pretty quickly. If you are interested in picking them up, I will have them linked down below. As always, hope this review helped you out and a huge thanks for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.